You're listening to the Crew Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? I am all fired up for another episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. I hope you ready, because I'm ready. We stay ready. Ew. <laughs> listen, 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 Linda. Get your together. Get your together, sis. Okay? We about to get all these people on the boundary line, on the boundary train, okay? I have been enjoying this book. Hope you've been enjoying it as well. But before we even jump into the book, you know I got to ask you guys, how are you feeling? And, you know, it's okay to feel your feels if it's not always hunky-dory, positive, I'm on top of the moon, I'm driving a boat type vibes. It could be, you know what, I ain't feeling it today, sis, and that is okay. We just know not to stay in that thing for too long or it will overtake us, okay? So hopefully after you listen to the podcast, you feel like, you know what, that one thing I don't have in trouble with, let me set a boundary with it and let me pivot my mindset on how to approach it, okay? All right, and um, let's just get into who gonna check me, boo, God is. Because he always checking us. Oh, I didn't even tell y'all how I feel. I feel okay. And just being transparent, something happened to me last week. Uh, I, I'll i share it. Probably after I finish reading author Maxine E. Norman's book, Love You More, Grieving Isn't Easy and Healing Hurts. Maybe I'll be ready to talk about it. <laughs> Until then, please do not DM me, call me, or ask about it. It will come out sooner or later on the podcast when I'm ready. All right. Um, so I'm feeling okay. But this is why I tell people, always have something else that you can do. Uh, besides watching TV and shopping and things like that, find something creative. This brings me so much joy and peace. Like no matter what is going on, it's my art. It's my opportunity to create. So... Try to find something actively that gets your brain going creatively, and I promise you it will it will help. It will do you some justice. All right, so hop back into who gonna check me, boo. God is. He is always checking us. And literally, I had I didn't have anything to put before I recorded the episode. And this morning, I was texting a friend that I am partnered up with in real estate, and this scripture came to me because I wanted to, she encouraged me with the scripture and some affirmations and I wanted to encourage her right back because that's just what we did, all right? It was 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, and that thing said, the body is not supported by one person, but by all of us. We are one, we are the strongest working together in unity. Teamwork is the key to living life in harmony so that we can do God's will. I wouldn't be able to do without help. My tribe, my crew is definitely needed. You guys, I may not physically be around you, but speaking positivity into someone is helping someone and that's together. And being in the crew is teamwork because I'm here to motivate you. And if you need help with something, you don't know where to go, you can always ask me for advice and I would definitely try to point you into the right direction. I want to be a place of resources for you. And that's what that's what the crew do. And this leads exactly into my crew love. And this was some crew love. I don't even think she knew I needed at the time. <laughs> but there's always perfect timing when things happen. And so I want to thank you for the crew love that I received in the mail. If you go back to our Instagram, you'll see the post of where... I posted the book, Love You More, Grieving Isn't Easy and Healing Hurts by Maxie E. Norman. She listens to the Crew Book Club. And I just thank you for this crew love. Um, I don't know what you have to provide to someone, but there's a gift in you that someone is waiting for and needing to be used. So use your gift. Don't be selfish with your gift. And... To be an author is a gift. To be a writer, to be a podcaster is a gift. We all have special gifts, and we talked about that in the last episode. 
So if you don't know what your gift is, I highly recommend seeking it. Not from people. No, 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 no. Because the self-gratification of people satisfying is not going to, is not what the gift is. The gift is in you. God put it there. And that's who you need to go to to find out what gift you need to be working in his will. <laughs> All right. So that was the who going to check me boo wrapped up with the with the crew love and if you haven't left a review on apple um, podcast review please do and if you don't have apple leave it on somebody else's phone and you should be sharing the pod show crew love by sharing the podcast as well like that would be really appreciated all right and don't forget i try to pick books that is also available on audible the book we're currently reading set boundaries find peace a Guide to Reclaiming Yourself by Nedra Tawab is on um, Audible and you can get a free 30-day experience through Audible with the Crew Book Club code CREWLOVE. That's audibletrial.com slash CREWLOVE. You can also click the link in show notes to get that. I am listening currently to the Will Book and after the Will Book, I'll be listening to the Viola Davis book as well. So I'm excited about that. And yeah, so... Mm -mm -mm. Now, the book we're currently reading, I highly su suggest buying it. There's a link in the bio to order the book as well. And I highly suggest buying it because it is literally a guide. It literally will tell you what to say, how to say, what to, how to recognize those things. I've highlighted the heck out of this book. I cannot tell you. So it's a very good reference piece. So I highly suggest getting it, listening to it cool because you're busy but getting it when you need to like call up somebody set a boundary i'm pretty sure there's a sentence in here that you can use it's a good read too it's an easy read okay you will have a whole bunch of oh ah moments trust me baby all right so let's get into a chat let's finish up chapter 12 friendships oh let's continue we love our friends my friends are like family. They're like sisters, literally. I've known them for like over 30 years, some of them. And they are my family. And I love them enough to set boundaries with them. And they love me enough to accept it. So I appreciate them. Thank you, my real life crew, my day ones. And even the women that I met recently, like, I love you guys too. Y'all are just amazing and I thank you you know you guys know who you are all right so we did we finished last week off what is a healthy friendship and unhealthy friendships and then we kind of talked about dealing with the chronic complainer and on page 208 we're going to continue and it talks about these three categories of complaint um of dealing with complaining one, venting, talking about issues without seeking guidance, but to simply let out your frustrations. Two, problem solving, seeking guidance or advice on how to correct an issue. Three, and I hope I'm saying this right. I should have looked this up before I got on here, y'all. <laughs> but it's been hella busy. It's uh, ruminating, talking about the same issue over and over again without trying to problem solve or work through your frustrations in a real way basically dumping on others um you know it's mostly the friendship issue um ruminating talking about the same issue over and over when you're constantly dumping and dumping and you ain't taking none of your friends advice and are you just not accepting and listening and typically venting and problem solving is not a huge issue it's that ruminating thing where you ever got on the phone with a friend or someone you consider a friend and they talk about the same thing over and over and over again they take no advice they don't even take their own advice and it's like they find themselves in this vicious cycle and you're like I am I like you look at the phone sometimes you like I don't even want to answer because you come to me about the same thing, but you're not doing nothing to change it. It's a difference of, like, if I have a friend going through a breakup or or something and they need to, like, talk to, through it, to cry through it, 
but I see them taking actions to get better and they learn their lessons. I feel like at our at my age, I, I'll be 35 in October. It's just, come on, sis, like, we should be taking steps to better ourselves. There's so many resources available that there should be no excuse of not bettering yourself. So if you're choosing not to, that's when the issue comes along. So she talks about on page 209 through 210 ways to deal with a chronic complainer and how to manage chronic complaining. Because if you're listening and you don't think you're the com- you like, am I the complainer? Oh. Uh, if you got to think about it, whether you complain it or not, you might be the complainer. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about ways to deal with a chronic complainer mentioned in the book. And remember this, the friend who complains all the time does so without limitation because we have provided a space for it. That's, we always got to take accountability for what we allow in our lives. Okay. Okay. Ways to deal with the chronic complainers, the author says, one, emphasize when appropriate. Redirect the conversation by changing the subject. Be intentional in your dialogue and stay on topic. Lead by example. Don't complain. You can't tell somebody to stop complaining you, and you complain it too. Like, you got to check yourself on that. Um, ask before offering an opinion and be mindful of of whether the person can handle the truth because you could just be wasting your time or hurting their feelings. Don't be dismissive saying it isn't so bad or you'll get over it. Oh, I hate when people say that. And I hate it and I say that because I was the person who said that and I had to practice more um, sympathy for people. I have one of my friends. She is like Jesus a lot and I could be like Peter. Well, I'd be quick to chop up off whole ill just coming out. And she'll come in and say, well, Sade, well, maybe, you know, and she just, she's like, okay, I get it. You're right. <laughs> the last one was, after you've done all you can, draw a clear boundary around the time alluded for the conversation and how often you will talk. So instead of just ignoring them and ghosting them, especially if you love them, and I don't like to ghost anybody because I wouldn't want anyone ghosting me. Just be like, okay, girl, I got 15 minutes. And you know what I'm saying? Or just let them know like, hey, I really don't have the time to talk about this converse, um, to conversate right now. Uh, she does give some examples on what to say. Like, I'm not sure how to help you with that. That sounds like a big issue. Have you thought about talking it over with a person who is bothering you? How have you thought about handling the situation? What would, what... I would do is completely biased and based on me. I like to explore what you could do in this situation. Just put it right back on them so they can face their own issues and solve their own problems. And a lot of times when they do that, then they feel really good about that decision and you're not taking on the responsibility of them coming back to them. Well, you told me too. Nah, sis. You figured it yourself. You did that yourself. All right. She also says, if you're the person complaining, it's helpful to set some boundaries with yourself. This is where the accountability comes in. How to manage that chronic complaining. Pay attention to how often you complain. I don't know whether you got to pinch yourself every time you complain. So that way it can kind of trigger you. (laughs) State whether you're simply venting or looking for feedback. And consciously consider the purpose of your conversation with people. And work through feelings by journaling, which is beneficial. And this is where I highly recommend therapy because this is where you can recognize whether you're oversharing or not and it's causing an issue when you bring up conversations with people. You should more than likely be talking to a therapist and the Cruel Book Club is partnered up with the therapist um, company, therapy company, BetterHelp, which is the sponsor of this episode. I don't just recommend BetterHelp. I actually use BetterHelp. I'm scheduling an appointment. (sighs) ASAP because after what I went through last week I I definitely need it so I highly recommend them I am partnering with them they are the sponsor of this episode and you can literally get 10% off your first month of professional therapy they do have financial aid so if you need assistance with therapy and you don't know how you're going to pay for it let them know let them know it's better it's called better help for a reason okay 
So go to betterhelp.com slash crew love. That's better H E L P dot com slash crew love. You can also click on the show notes and it will be in the link as well. Okay. Now let's get back to these um common boundary issues in friendships. All right. And and just remember you guys, life changes. So when life changes, our boundaries may change and our requirements in our friendship may change. And sometimes we want things in relationships to last forever, but sometimes they're not because you're going to grow. You're going to elevate. And if you're the same person you were at 20 and you 35, uh, whew, let's really think about it. Are we doing the work? <laughs> okay. And it don't always have to be a forever ending on a friendship. It could just be a moment of walking away and saying, you know what, let me figure this out and then let's revisit our friendship. I don't know if you guys watched the show Working Moms. Oh, it's such a good show. And there was an episode where, well, the show, the main two women have known each other forever. They've gone through life together. And this season, they have this moment of like, you know, maybe you don't bring the growth out of me and we can't grow together and they take a break and it the way the show um show it looked like it was probably like an eight month break or so and then they reconnected and realized like we can do this together so sometimes taking a break from a sh- friendship is beneficial because you've been so enmeshed in each other lives for so long that you need to see what you are like apart um and then be able to come back together But some of those common boundaries in friendships could be being the relationship advisor, loaning money and possessions, offering unsolicited advice and feedback, being burnt out from giving advice, um, receiving unsolicited advice and feedback, dealing with needy friends. And she goes into like detail on like, what that is, and then a possible boundary you can set. And I'm just going to talk about uh, I'll just do two of them. Loaning money and possessions. Because I feel like sometimes we're more comfortable asking our friends for a couple of dollars um, than we are our family. Um, and she quotes here, she says, my friend always wants to borrow money. How should I handle it? And there's three of them. I'm just going to say the two shortest ones. It says, I'm not able to loan you the money, point blank, period. And I'm not able to give you blank, but I can offer this. For me... I don't like to loan money. And if I loan it to you, it's going to be based on what I can do, where I look at it like an investment. Not an investment because I'm not getting a return, but I look at it the same process. Like, if I give it to you, I don't expect it back. But if you ever ask me again, you're just not going to get it. And I'm only giving it to you if I can lose it. I'm not giving you my light bill money. I'm not giving you my kid money. I'm not giving you my mortgage money. I'm not giving you my car note money. I can give you what I can, what I think I can spare. Okay. And another thing, don't us just because your friend has certain possessions, don't assume that they have the money to loan you. Don't be counting your friend pockets. That's the utmost disrespect. That has happened to me and my husband several times. I'm trying to build generational wealth for my kids. So they ain't got to be out here asking for nobody money. So yeah, so only give what you can afford to lose. All right, and and give without, um, give without. I can't think of a word, but I said it last episode with family. Don't give me something if you're expecting me to do something for you. Like if you borrow money from me, I can't have the same expectation just because you. I said yes, that you'll say yes. You know what I'm saying? Everybody pockets are different and we just have to respect those boundaries when it's said, when it's said. All right. So those, oh, the second one I'll talk about is hmm, dealing with a needy friend. She quotes here, my friend constantly wants me to do things with them and it's excruciating. <laughs> I would hate I would hate to have a friend where it's excruciating to do something with them, but maybe being uncomfortable or doing something you don't like. And she said possible boundary is one, stop agreeing to show up in a way that you can't maintain long term. Allow your healthy distance in your friendships with time together apart and decide which things you enjoy doing with this friend and do only what you enjoy with them. Sis, 
I would rather you tell me you don't want to do something than to do with me and have resentment. I, I, I just don't like that. Oh, it's just because then you're being fake. And I would have the utmost respect for him if you just say, you know, I don't feel like doing that. Thank you very much and keep it pee. All right. Um, She talks about how you're not a therapist to your friend. And when and she gives us some ideas. So when people need therapy um, and how you can tell them to go do that. Oh, here it is. When people need therapy but come to you instead, do this. Remember that you are a friend, not a therapist. Often the resources to get started, such as books or contact information of a therapist or support group. I said that before. Buy them this book. Click the link. Buy them the book. Buy two. One for you, one for them. Y'all can read it together. Y'all can have your own little mini book club about it. Uh, send them the link to the Better Health Therapist. Hell, pay it for their first month. That would be a dope gift. If I had a friend say, hey, sis, I got your therapy next month, I'd be like, oh, my God, you love me. Like, you really care about me because you want me to heal. I mean, I think that's a dope gift. Those are the type of gifts that I'll talk about. And putting money in my pocket to invest in my career um, and those type of gifts. You can miss me with a bag. You can miss me with trinkets. Be like, here, sis, take this money, invest in your business or I brought a stock for you or you know, like like that. Or oh, I brought you therapy. Oh, girl. Yes, that that's that's a good gift to me, to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, those were like there's so much stuff in here. I felt like was really good for friendships. But, you know, y'all, I'll be trying to keep y'all under 30, no more than 35 minutes. <laughs> so we're going to move on to chapter 13. And chapter 13 is about work boundaries. Woo! Those work boundaries, I feel like, are so hard because we depend on the financials of it, um, of it all and the comfort that comes, you know, the money. Let's just talk about it. Sometimes we be feeling like we got to do whatever to get the bag. But in actuality, that's just going to burn us out and a lot of times make us unhappy. So we definitely have to set those work boundaries, whether you're in the office or an entrepreneur, whatever you're doing, there should be a boundary when it comes to work. The author has a quote. She says, people treat you according to your boundaries. That includes the people you work with. That includes your boss. And she mentions ways and things to do that in this chapter. And I'm just going to talk about the ones that stuck out to me the most. Um, on page 219 through 220, she says, Before you leave a job or a relationship, it's always important first to consider these three questions. Have I tried setting any boundaries? In what ways do I contribute to the situation? Accountability. And what can I do to make the situation healthier? It's like exhaust all ends before you just walk away. You know, I like how she she does that. Now, she talks about a woman in the book who is changing jobs and getting um, getting into issues with, you know, uh, people pleasing and fearing of setting limits with um, co-workers and with work. And she's concerned about being aggressive. And as a black woman, I get it. You know, the moment that we tell somebody to get away from our desk or we not help you with anything, oh, she mean, she aggressive. But in actuality, there are ways to say it. And the author states it here. She says, let's chat during lunch. I have a few projects I need to push through. Or I have a lot of things on my plate so I can help you with, so I can't help you with your projects. And I think, like I always say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it when it comes to boundaries. And that's why I love this book. She mentioned some of the boundaries. She, the, she named the character Janie. She says, say no to requests for assistance from coworkers. Stop participating in off, office gossip. When office gossip is brought up, make a clear statement about the dis, disinterest. Say no to requests for after work gatherings. Um, before agreeing to new projects from her boss, allow others to work on it when possible or delegate that task to others. We be so afraid to delegate, but sometimes we got to let things go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> sometimes you just got to let it go. We be doing so much trying to be puppets and I have our hands into everything and in actuality, that that's not healthy that's not healthy she says here janie came to the realize that she wasn't in a toxic work environment she just hadn't been setting the appropriate boundaries so let's focus on setting the appropriate boundaries 
for work and friendships before we just walk away and take that accountability first. All right. Now, if you just don't like your job, that's a whole nother story and you have a choice to move. Don't let the bag that you're getting now keep you from peace. That I don't know how. I know we're like, well, my the lifestyle I live is super comfortable, but you're miserable. You see people out here rich as hell, living on, can do can go do whatever they want and still be miserable because they don't have no peace. I don't know if y'all saw the clip where Cardi was like, I heard on a podcast, The Breakfast Club, and she was just like, you know, sometimes I wish I could just go back to Cardi in the strip club where I was still making money, but people didn't know who I was. Um, and she was like, man, I wish I had just had the money. And, but also, even when you do get money for someone who's not even famous, you just, if you don't have self-peace and self-preservations, you will struggle and it will hurt. So, yeah, but if you don't like your job, that's a whole different story. (laughs) But before we leave that job, let's make sure we set the appropriate boundaries, okay? All right, so let's have it to boundaries for entrepreneurship. I cannot leave you guys hanging because I'm speaking to myself when I read this on page 229, you know, listen, entrepreneur, unless God himself told you not to charge and to give a discount, charge your full price, okay? Don't be letting people get away with a discount. Charge your full price. If you also offer that reduced price, do it sparingly. Like, it got to make sense. If you messed up, okay, cool, yada, yada, yada. But charge your full prices. And don't work all the time. I'm preaching to myself. Woo! Take breaks, pause. As a fellow entrepreneur, I know what you consistently have to work to do, but guess what? You're the boss and you can define your limits. Avoid using phrases that are about working nonstop, such as hustle hard, on a grind, rest later. You know, I was listening to a podcast by Anna Pacella and he was on some, there is no um, balance. And I get that. There's no balance, but there's time management for self. And... I will schedule in a walk. If I say I'm working out at 8 a.m. to 8.45, 9 o'clock, I am working out. That is appointment to myself. For me to fill your cup, my cup got to be filled, okay? So set those boundaries in those workplace boundaries. And before we go to our next topic, our challenge of the week, I want to get an understanding for you. Setting boundaries is important even for our social invites when it comes to corporate inviting us to work or even as an entrepreneur and networking you know not hanging out with particular co-workers after work because everybody can't separate social and work be very careful I had to realize that when I was in corporate even as a realtor like yeah we are all CEOs but I also have to think about Everybody don't know how to separate that. And everybody don't need access to me and how I party. Okay? Okay? Because everything don't need to be on social media either. (laughs) Um, Not offering help to your boss with personal things. Unless you're like a personal assistant and that's what you hired to do. But that also needs to be at a reasonable time and reasonable hour. Because you would be miserable. Um, Allowing a co-worker to follow you on social media but restricting what they can view. Yes, yes, yes. I'll... I mean, I'm public, my page is public, but I'm very particular about my page. Um, It's work. Every now and then you'll get a glimpse of life and a little balance of, you know, my family and things of that nature. But I ain't out here in a club. When I'm in a club, if I'm in a club, you ain't gonna get no pictures of, you might get pictures of other people. (laughs) But I'm gonna curate it (laughs) because we all like to party, but it's not gonna be, nah. I just feel like certain things is out of, Stay to yourself. And everybody shouldn't be following you. If you want to block some people, block block them people. <laughs> okay? And also, no people be on your social media looking at your stuff before you get a job. So you still want to be careful about that. I think there's a there's a thin line of how much access people should have to you have with you on social media. Um, muting a co-worker whose content you don't enjoy. People, please stop getting offended if people unfollow you. Just because they don't follow you, you don't know what they're going through mentally. And if your content is triggering something in them, stop. Everything ain't about you. Point blank period. Everything is not about you. And sometimes people just got to take a break from you. Stop being so darn self-entitled 
feeling like people need to follow you, people need to respond to you when they need to respond to you. People got their own going on. So stop being so entitled to other people's time, okay? Um, another thing, not giving your coworker your social media handle. When people ask you, it's okay to say, no, I don't feel comfortable giving it to you. I, that, I just, you know, I'm not interested. <laughs> she gives some ways that you can say it, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to get into it. That's on page 231. If you get the book, Ways to Say No to Invites, what those things sound like. And I'll post it on our social media. So definitely go follow IG because a lot of times I can't squeeze into everything on the particular podcast, but I might talk about it and do polls on our Instagram. So follow that, okay? Um, I want you to consider this. On page 232, the author says, work is where people spend the majority of their time and your time is valuable, okay? Therefore, being comfortable in the space where you spend the most time is essential to your well-being. Remember that. Remember that. Your well-being, okay? Now, let's get into the challenge of the week. The challenge of the week is da -da -da -da, exercise. On page 232, set a work boundary. Yes, you're going to set a work boundary. The author says grab your journal um, and a paper to complete this exercise. What is one boundary that you can implement in any work environment? Define what your work schedule is. That goes for the entrepreneur specifically. And what times are you willing to work outside your work schedule? Given what you know about your boss, what's the best way to set a boundary with them? Do you need to set any of your coworkers um, on a boundary? And how do you think you'll benefit from setting boundaries at work? Like, ask yourself those questions, and then I want you to practice setting a boundary at work this week. Let me know how that goes, okay? So, my boundary I'm a, that I decided to set was and I, yeah it's with work to so try to be done with work by 6 30 7 o'clock the latest because real estate and the podcast it'd be hard to like balance but I'm trying to get better at that um but yeah that's what I'm I'm definitely gonna be trying to like stop work for sure 6 30 so that's the boundary I'm gonna work on on my schedule all right so let's get into what would the crew do Woo! this was good um it came from the crew instagram the crew book club on instagram it says I work a job that I'm no longer interested in and I want to open up my own business but I just don't know where to start how do I figure that out Hmm. Okay, so I don't know what do you even I yeah, I guess you don't have a business that you have in mind. So I guess you're trying to figure out what type of business to open. Oh, and let me just say this. Everybody is not meant to be an entrepreneur full time. I do believe we all need a little side hustle, whether it's driving Uber or baking cakes for the weekend and selling them. Like, you should have some side money for some extra money. We can't afford not to with inflation and things the way they are. But to be a full-blown business, let's figure out why do you want to do that? Are you wanting to do that because everybody else is doing it and that's what people tell you should do? Or are you really passionate about owning your own business? And I heard my team leader at my um, office, at my broker office, she was like, because I was telling some other agents, you need to be the CEO of your business. Like, you are everything. But then she was like, but you are the employer. And what you do on a daily basis, would you hire that employer? So think about how much time and effort it's going to take to be in that business. And what are you really wanting to do? And I feel like you got to be in a mode of, if I don't even make no money for the first few years, did I still want to do this. That's the type of risk that you're going to take. So... To figure that out, and I'm a very, I have an amazing relationship with Christ, and I just feel like you got to go to him to know what you want to do. And if you're like, well, I ain't got no time for that. If you go around in a circle trying a whole bunch of stuff, until you know what God wants you to do, you're going to be on a hamster wheel. I'm just... I'm just saying, and then you're going to be stopping. So your motivation got to be right. Your motive got to be right. So whatever business you have, you have to be willing to put in the work even if it doesn't generate money in the beginning. And don't go off quitting your job until you can afford 
the lifestyle or if you quit your job, you have money saved and you're willing to sacrifice a lifestyle for a while, okay? And start saying no to a lot of stuff. So I don't know if that helped <laughs> anything, but go to God, figure out what he wants you to do that I feel like it may sound like the longest route, but it's the better route. I've been there because I tried multiple things that wasn't working. But the moment that I accepted what God asked me to do, that's when things started happening. Um, and also, really make sure why you want to open a business is that, like, what is the why behind it? Is it because you really want to do and that's what you need to be doing? Or is that because that's what society is telling you to do? But if you're listening, let me know, was there a particular business or when you think you got it, I would love to know. So definitely send a follow-up. That was What Would The Crew Do? Ask advice. If you have any any advice you need asked, please go DM The Crew Book Club. Um, we're on Instagram. We're on Fanbase. We're on YouTube. Or you can also email, if you don't have any of that, you can email thecrewbookclub at gmail.com and just put in the subject title, Ask Advice. All right? So I can't let you go without giving you a quote of the week. The quote of the week comes from our lovely author, Nedra Glover Tawab. It says, boundaries are not common sense. They're taught. So crew, go out there, teach people how to handle you, and set your boundaries. I will see you all next week right here on the Crew Book Club podcast. Hey! Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, we would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you. Thank you and welcome to the crew.